Hello everyone, this is Robert Jamison with 99centpro.net. Today we're going to be looking at how to create the True Detective intro using only Premiere Pro. Now I know I see a lot of people who use the After Effects version of it, which is great and is the most optimal way to use it. But not everyone knows how to use After Effects or doesn't have the access to After Effects or is just not familiar with the workflow and just prefer to use Premiere Pro only from scratch. So what we're going to be looking at today is just using some green screen footage along with some creepy black and white footage that I got from Creepy Footage Compilation more 2014. It's available for free on YouTube. The guy generously shared it. So grab it if you need it uh, to use for some of your practice runs or whatever you may need it for. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your stock footage, drop it into your project. There you go. And you're not going to want to keep it on video one. Just drop that up to video two because later on we're going to use the video one track for our background. And you don't want it to be taken up yet because some of the effects that we're going to be applying uses the track as reference. So just to prevent any errors or mistakes later on, we're just going to go ahead and drop that on level two. So then you go into your green screen footage and you just pick whatever selection you want. Grab video only, come, drop that on top. That now to match the end of our footage. There we go. So then obviously first things first, we need to come over here and grab our ultra key. I drop our color. There we go. So now we're already halfway done. So after you drop your ultra key on, you want to come over here and grab your track mat key. And then we'll drop that onto our stock butterfly effect. Then you want to choose our video 3 layer. That way it looks at your video 3. Now you see how it is cropped in. This is because of the aspect ratio difference between the two different types of footage that we have. So to kind of compensate for the difference, I usually just go in and choose motion, uncheck uniform scale, and expand that width. That way it looks pretty good. And she matches up pretty well. Now you see how she's coming through pretty seamlessly, except we have a lot of video coming in through the back. And that's not what we want. Now the reason why that's happening is because the key isn't perfect. So you gotta come in and kind of clean it up a little bit. Kind of dropping the shadows a bit pretty much knocks it all out, but you don't want to kill your shadows. Want a little bit there. So we can also increase our pedestal. Kind of get a nice clean edge, a nice sharp edge. And you may want to add a little bit of softness to it. Nothing too serious, nothing too dramatic. All right, so after we do that, then we take our camera footage of the girl. Because in the True Detective intro, you can still see the guy's face. Very high contrast. And that is important. That's extremely important. What the person is wearing or the contrast of your footage. See, he's being mostly backlit with a little bit of key on the side. And it creates a lot of darkness in the front. Now, the footage that I'm using doesn't really have a whole lot of contrast. We can add a little bit in, and just keep that in mind when you're filming your footage for this, to have an extremely high contrast, as much as you can without losing any detail. You know, you don't want it just jet black. So we'll just take this footage, Control C, select our video 3 layer, just pop it back up, come back down here, and just paste it back in. So there you have it. So we have our key footage coming back on top. Now, you'll see a little bit later, we're going to get some lines that's coming through from the key. So on our top footage, I like to come in and just choke it a few points. And you'll see why that comes in handy later. Now on this one, so she's not so prominent. There are a lot of ways to do this. And it all depends on your footage and what you want to be using it for how you plan on using it, and how good your footage is, and your overall look. A lot of people will just go into your blend modes and multiply, or overlay. Whatever works for your footage, you have to find out what's best for it. Each little bit's gonna be a little, is gonna be different no matter what. Myself, I personally like to use the Luma key. 
That way you get your footage coming in in the background, but you still get a nice tone on this on your subject. Now you can adjust your cutoff, but you see whenever you do that, you're getting a little bit of graininess to it. And mostly your darts are the one that's coming through. But if you lower your threshold below the amount of your cutoff, then it inverts and it's mostly pulling your darts out and keeping your highs in. Then you can just play with it to find out what looks best for what you're going for. Then you can also add a color correction onto it just to help reduce the, the saturation into it. But personally, I like to use tint. That way I can add some color into the white. Let's just add a little bit of brown to it just to get a little bit of rustic color. Then after that, for your background, you can add color mask, make it white. Okay. We'll just drop that on there, extend it. Then we'll go over to our footage that we just painted, copy our tint, apply it to our color mat. That way they're the same color, although it looks a little bit strong, so we can reduce that to. Alright, so we have pretty much the general idea of how the double exposure works. Now in the original tutorial, um, our friend over here, Mikey, he goes into much greater detail on using vignettes, overlays, dust particles, screen overlays, anything, you know, just to kind of give it those final touches. And what you see in here, and also in the original, it's prominent here, but not as prominent here. Now, now on your colored footage, you can add a curves into it. And then increase your contrast here, just to get more definition out of it. You can increase or lower your lights, depending on what you're looking for. There you go, that looks all right. Still a little harsh and kind of like a, an overall silhouette. So over on our original footage, you can come in and soften it a bit more. Let's try 15. Now we'll match that in our original, our overlay. Bring it up just a little bit more though. 18, so it's just a little bit softer around the edge. Not too much though. And then from there on our color footage on the top, we can just add a little crop to it and just crop the top and feather it, not too harsh. There you go. So you're not seeing as much of the face in the front, but you're seeing more on the bottom. And that gives you that differential contrast clean. Now on your butterfly footage, you should also pop on that tint just to Help let it match. That way it can blend in between the two. Now on the tent on our color mask, we can increase it back up. Color drop that. That way it blends in perfectly. There's seamlessness across all of it. Then also you can add your crop onto your original footage. That way it just masks out a bit more, but you can feather it a bit more. You can increase it, lower it. That way you're not getting such a hard edge. Now, the reason why the edge looks so harsh on mine compared to the original is because their original has a highly blown out background. And the whites are tinted to be the same color as the background. So just like what we did, where it matches the color perfectly. But mine, my footage, goes all the way up to the top. The content, the black darts of the content go all the way up to the top. So that's why you're seeing the line all the way up to the top. Whereas theirs fades off into a white all the way around the top because they have a sky in the background. Now in your footage, it may be the same, it may be different, and it all depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to use it for. But this is just a little quick intro into how to get your basic double exposure done 
like the True Detective intro using green screen footage and matting only in Premiere Pro instead of After Effects. And please check out the True Detective After Effects tutorial done by Mikey. Uh, a lot of the finer details do translate over from After Effects to Premiere Pro and feel free to watch his first, look at it, and adapt some of the styles. Like he pre-composes some of his footage and you can do the same thing in here by nesting. Uh, a lot of ca capacity is about the same, but this is just a general overview on how to accomplish it.